Thanks for your support as a channel member, Emil Raider. It's fair to say I've had a pretty pitiful start to life as manager of Bristol Rovers and I'm already in episode two wondering if I'm going to be able to actually do this. It's harder than it looked. But today we do get to meet the first wave of new signings. If you are excited to meet them, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on the video. Um, with the start of a new club, it would be awesome to keep smashing 2,000 likes an episode, just like we were with Kings Lynn, or else the people of Bristol will just assume you don't love them. And that that's cruel. Hello and welcome to Club 2, Part 2 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have a couple of league games. We're away against Grimsby, at home against Ipswich. But the uh, the real story is going to be transfers. As you can see, in fact, you might not be able to see. My glorious physique might be in the way. There you go. And we are rock bottom of the league now. Six points clear of safety. It has been a miserable start to life at Bristol Rovers. You can see we did actually manage to win a football match and get a goal out of Jerome Sinclair, albeit from the penalty spot. That is the only game he's played uh, because he immediately got injured. He was injured then, scored a goal, got injured again, and since then we haven't scored a goal. Um, we just we're absolutely awful going forward. Um, I've tried multiple different systems. I've tried different tactics, different shapes. Nothing is working. And um, we, it's a problem, a problem that I'm trying to solve. I'm starting to throw some money around. You'll remember we had a million pounds to spend. It doesn't really work out quite as a million pounds once you factor in the extra wages I've got to pay as well. I am trying to clear out some deadwood, but I've got these two. I might be able to do two more, um, but these are the two signings I've made to try and generate some goals for us. Harry Chapman, with a name like that, he must be good. I love a good Harry. Um, he can play on either wing, inverted winger on the right-hand side, or inverted winger, or inside forward on the left-hand side. Three and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential ability. Comes in from Blackburn for hundred and ten thousand um, pounds. This is the kind of this is like the prototype signing that we're looking for. Um, players who are probably all right. Um, they're on the transfer list somewhere else, though, so we can pick them up for a little bit of a bargain. We don't want to blow all of our money in one go, so hopefully Chapman comes in and can um, improve things in wide areas and create some more chances for us. With him on one wing and Garcia on the other, I have hope, although that being said, Garcia has been really, really poor, considering he is or was considered the best player at the club when I arrived on star rating. He has been awful. Hopefully, with some better players around him, we'll start to see some better form from him. The, the, so that's the creator. And this is where we're expecting or hoping our goals are going to come from. Keenan Davis, 23-year-old striker, three-star current ability, four-star potential ability. He's only five foot six, so ideal lone striker material. Um, a little bit better than Jerome Sinclair and Gavin Riley. Um, potential to be a leading League One striker in this future. That's what we're looking for. Good League Two striker. This is what we needed. He scored two goals in his life. These, they, we, no one wants to join. We haven't got enough money. Oh, I just hope they make a difference. Um, this is the team we're putting out there to try and make that difference. I think I am just about settled on this as a system, a 4-3-3 control possession. Um, certainly in games where we're well, we're trying to score. We need to score some goals. The thing is, when we go defensive, and I know there is an argument for going defensive in some matches, but when we do that, um, let's take an example of a match where we went and defended. Sunderland, did we go and defend against them? Um, if we have a look at the match stats, that's not a good example. There have been matches where we've not had a shot. We can't be going there just defending and not having a shot because we're not that good at defending. So, fingers crossed, um, with these two new guys in and... Maybe one or two more more new signings to go with them. In fact, I might make him the inside forward over here and drop him back to that. That might work a little bit better. So we're going with Townsend in goal. A back four of Kingsley, Lennon, Kilgore and Little. Um, so we have our first choice back four together, finally. The midfield that still don't like each other, Clark, Upson and Bud, um, with Chapman, Davis and Garcia as our new look front three which hopefully we'll get a performance out of. Bear in mind, these two not close to match fit, but I am throwing them straight in because, the the I mean, Riley, the striker who has been playing for us, is 
arguably the worst striker I've ever come across in Football Manager. Um, if you are watching uh, Gavin Riley, I am sorry. Perhaps you're better than this in real life. But holy smoke, you're terrible in this game. Um, right. We owe Grimsby after our last match. There we go. And he's uh, he, he occasionally gets opportunities, um, but just utterly wastes them immediately. I've seen him miss and hit the corner flag. And now we're already losing. After four minutes, I'm going to get sacked. Ah! I can already, I can feel the comments section um, telling me that I never should have left Kings Lynn. I, so I'll refer you back to this point of this video for every time you want to say that. I absolutely should have left Kings Lynn. They're the rules of the save. Um, I leave when there's a better opportunity. We jumped up two leagues. Oh, for goodness sake. We jumped up two leagues and took a big pay rise. We absolutely were right to leave. However, I do expect to be managing in the conference again in the near future. Um, there we go. Sinclair can come on and play out there. We're going to make him do that. Oh, this is already far from ideal. I've designed my new look front three and we got nine minutes out of them before one of them gets an injury. And now, once again, we're left playing players out of position. It's not good. When it when it rains, it pours, boys and girls. If I do manage to lead us to safety this season, it'll be one of my greatest achievements in Football Manager, I think, because this is just a terrible side. Chapman now, on the right-hand side, not where I wanted him to be playing. I wanted him on the left, but we don't have an alternative on the right with Garcia injured. Upson now, trying to generate something, which is nice. Bird is there, but it goes just over. I mean, to be fair, looking at those stats... There are promising signs in this match. Yes, we're losing again, but promising signs. We're having shots. We've had more possession. This is the closest we've looked like to my Kings Lynn team um, since I've been here. We've, this is the first time we've dominated possession in a match, which I know we've gone to a, a controlled possession system, but we have used this a couple of times before and not been able to control possession. So I see that as a big positive. Um, I see the fact we're having shots as a positive because, like I say, there have been matches where we've not even had shots. Yes, we're 2-0 down after half an hour, but I've got to look for the positives in these matches because I, I'm, I know it's January. I'm almost already accepting that we're going to get relegated and I'm probably going to get fired, but I might not. They might keep me around, um, in which case I'm just going to keep trying to bring in good players who have got the potential to get better and try and view this as a long-term project and kind of almost ignore this season and just take my medicine and build for next year. And then if I end up not being here, then so be it. But I've got to do... I can't just try and rush it for a short-term job because that's not how I manage. It's, I'm not capable of doing that. I proved that in Window Wonderland. I can't do it for short-term. So I've got to build for the long-term and uh and hope that something somewhere someone somehow has a little bit of spark of inspiration we get a little bit of form going and we find a way to somehow survive chapman with the cross looking for davis it actually ended up with sinclair um because i mean seven points it's we're like three wins away from safety i mean safety at the moment obviously we need to do more than win three games for the rest of the season but it's as simple as that. If we find a little run of three or four games, then we can build from that. And we've hopefully still going to have more players come in. I've got a couple more that I'm trying to bring in at the moment, a midfielder and a right back. Um, I think I'm probably going to have to look for another winger as well. We've got some players we're trying to move out. Um, January is going to be an important, busy month. Um, we need to go to a more attacking system, obviously. I'm going to say get creative, even though... We're, uh, I mean, we're, oh, it's so frustrating because this, I mean, it seems bizarre and we have had a couple of times where we've defended really well and been a little bit, not unlucky because we've been dominating, but we defended really well and it's been a tight scoreline and this isn't one of those examples. 2-0 is comfortable for Grimsby, but looking at those stats, this is by far and away the best we've played since I've been here, including that game we won. That game we won. In fact, that would have been a good one to show you. We only had one shot in that entire match, which was the penalty. We didn't have a single shot from open play. We won a penalty. We scored it. We defended well. 
and I felt dirty. I can't. I'm not. That's not how I want to survive in this league. Um, I'm not going to bring Riley on because what's the point? Um, he says, but I might have to. Um, we'll get Ben you on, and then we can. Oh, Sinclair can play that side. Perhaps I should have kept Chapman over the other side. Um, so you can be the winger. You can be. In fact, I'm going to have to bring Riley on because, of course, Davis not fit. So you get to see just how poor Riley is. Watch him score now. <laughs> oh, let's demand more. I've brought on two terrible players who I'd like to leave. Um, there you go. I've pressured them. I've pressured you by demanding you at least try and win a football match. Oh, we've moved off the bottom as it stands. Oldham are doing even worse than us. Presumably that must be a goal difference thing. Uh, Bud now trying to build from the midfield and uh, nothing. Just runs straight into a pink shirt, which, by the way, pink shirt? Why are they wearing pink at home? Do Grimsby wear pink now? Um, I thought they wore black and white stripes. We're 3-0 down. Oh, this isn't even a good side. I don't want to see the replay. They're not even a good team. They're 14th in the league after this win. They were down in this relegation battle and we've gone to their place and just been absolutely ripped apart. I could see the board looking at how pitiful I've started and sacking me. But at the same time, I want to sit down and have a meeting with them and say, how did how did you allow the club to get in the state that it's in? Because it's going to take more than one transfer window to fix. To get to the point where there's only two strikers at the club and neither of them have ever scored a goal. How is that a thing that's been allowed to happen? How have they got to the point where the midfield all hate each other? How have they got to the point where there's no other right backs other than the 34 year old who's always injured? How is there only one goalkeeper here? How is this club in such a mess? Aggressive, far from pleased. Hopefully, before the Ipswich game, There'll be another couple of signings turn up. Let's see how badly injured Garcia is. Oh, and look, Jerome Sinclair's injured again too. Wow. Wow. Well, we've managed one more signing between the two matches. Charlie Savage comes in on loan for the rest of the season for Manchester United. Central midfielder slash attacking midfielder. Three and a half star current ability. Five-star potential, better than anyone else we've got at the club. Never played a game of football before. Doesn't matter. He's going to start playing games of football today. What it means is we're able to fix the midfield who hate each other um, by just removing two of the bad elements of it. A go-go comes in for Clark at the base of the midfield because Bud and Clark can't play together, apparently. And Savage comes in for Upson because, Sav because Upson can't play with either Clark or Bud. It's, I mean, I don't understand it, but that might be a huge difference maker. Ben New comes in for the injured Garcia as well, meaning Chapman switches to the right-hand side. And uh, we, again, are looking for performances from new boys who aren't match fit. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I love the fact that he's just been given the number 42. The game knows he's the answer. Right, let's... Um, this is it. That was a sign. I'm absolutely taking that. Let's do a passionate team talk. Um, let's passionately avenge what happened last time. See, there's passionate players knocking about the place all of a sudden. This would be if we can find a way to sort ourselves out here. I know it's a good side who should absolutely destroy us. But I'm feeling good going into this game. We've made a couple of good signings and fingers crossed... They can start to gel together a little bit. We've got rid of the midfield that doesn't work. This is there's there's positive change happening at Bristol Rovers. I just need it to show on the pitch. And of course, we go one 0 down with pretty much the first attack of the game, because it doesn't matter how positive the change is when you're playing against a team so much better than you. Ah, oh, I don't even know why Ipswich is still in this league. Presumably, they went up and then came back down again. I can't believe Ipswich are still in League One. Three years into the save. They must have gone up and come back down. But there's players I've heard of in their team. It's completely unfair. We're going to go positive immediately. It's Kingsley to take the corner. A goal here would be spectacular because it's been so long since we've scored a goal. I, we've not scored a goal since that Jerome Sinclair penalty that I showed you at the start of the episode. And I don't know that I've ever gone that long in a game of football manager without seeing my team score. So, 
Today's got to be the day. Even if we win, even if we lose 8-1, I'll take that as a victory because at least we scored a goal and that's progress. But, oh my word. This is... It didn't look like that hard a job. Yes, I knew they were in a relegation battle. But relegation threatened team in League One. It looked like a fun little, a fun little challenge. Oh, I'm not the man to go into a team. I mean, this isn't the first time I've tried to do this. I don't know that I've ever had success going into a team in a relegation battle halfway through the season. Um, we're going to aggressively avenge what happened. I can build a team over the summer, no problem. This is always my weakness, coming into a team that are struggling. This has got tour vibes around. And those of you who have been around for a while, definite tour vibes. Um, right, we're going to go attacking now. Um, we don't even have much in the way of attacking options on the bench. That's the really worrying thing. Um, Davis, we've just spent a quarter of a million pounds on him. And I know he's not fully match fit yet, but... Oh, uh, I don't think he's the answer, is he? Riley can come on for him. McDonald, who is still our top scorer, can come on on that left-hand side. Savage is having the worst debut anyone's ever had. We'll bring up and on for him. And, uh, well, let's have 10 minutes of passion. Imagine a late equaliser. A late equaliser changes the mood, especially if it comes from Riley, because everyone would be flabbergasted about what just happened. Um, but it is Ipswich with the ball. Ball over the top. We're completely out of position. It's all on our keeper. He does make the save, which is delightful. Um, but that gap between us and safety is gradually growing. Um, we're now up to nine points from safety, if we, assuming we do go on to lose this game. Which, I mean, I'm not scared yet. You're scared. I can't even switch to a two-striker system. We don't have any strikers who can score goals. Look at Posh with Mo Issa scoring goals. That's his second of that game. I could have gone there. Oh. Once again, trying to put the positive spin on this, there are encouraging signs. Um, yes, it was which have had five clear-cut chances. That's not particularly encouraging. But we're keeping the ball now, which we weren't doing before. We're having shots now, which we weren't doing before. We're just not very good but I think we're better than we were even though results have been absolutely pitiful we do seem to be playing better but then I guess playing well isn't really what you need in a relegation battle my word Gavin Riley's just scored a goal we've got the late equaliser and we've got a goal from the man previously described as the worst striker in the history of football manager and we've got a late equaliser against promotion chasing Ipswich. This really could be the turning point. It's a lovely finish from Riley. 91st minute. There's still time to go and grab a winner. Imagine if we did. Kingsley with the corner. Riley's there again. That would have been too much of a dream come true. And in fact, Ipswich have got the break on. And it's Guion Edwards, former posh player. He's going to score. Oh, Townsend makes the save. Oh, my word. We've got another chance. Have we got another chance? What's that linesman flagging about? Right, we've got a corner. We're well over the allocated added on time. Um, but it's Kingsley to take the corner in swinger. And it ends up with a go-go. Just have a shot. Somebody shoot. McDonald, shoot. Somebody shoot. One all. I will absolutely take that. Clutch at it. Absolutely delighted that not only have we now scored a goal, we've got a point. The comeback is on, boys and girls. There's going to be more signings coming in. We're off the bottom of the league. Next time you see me, we'll be in the playoffs. <laughs> Next time you see me, hopefully we'll be a little bit close to grab it, to sort of clawing ourselves to safety. I'm reluctant to go too many matches ahead because I don't want to get sacked in episode three. I'd rather it came in four or five. So I'm thinking I'll probably be back at the end of the window. So we'll do, I'll do the next three matches offline and then be back for Luton and Charlton and hopefully we'll have picked up another couple of points in here somewhere and we we push on towards safety hopefully if you've enjoyed that please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos and thank you very much for watching